In this video, we want to talk about how to prove the set identities, and we are going to look at just one of the identities and proving it in three different ways, and any of the remaining identities you can certainly prove on your own. So as I said, there are essentially three ways to prove um, set identities. One is to prove each set in the identity is a subset of the other. So again, we had said if a is equal to B, then we have to show that A is a subset of B and that B is a subset of A, and that is how we can prove that's true. So that is one method of proof. Um, the second is to use propositional logic. This is probably my least favorite, um, but again, it looks more, more like a two-column proof that we had used previously when we were looking at the different properties um, in propositional logic. And something brand brand new is to use a membership table, which shows the same combination of sets do or don't belong to the identity on each side of the identity. So let's get started. So I have De Morgan's second law, and I have it on the next several slides that we're going to talk about. And we're going to prove it in several different ways. Um, this is the first way. The first way is essentially showing that if A is a subset of B, and B is a subset of A, then A must be equal to B. And that's what we're trying to do, is we're trying to show that this side is equal to this side. So I first have to show that the complement of A intersect B is a subset of the union of the complement of A and the complement of B. And then on the next slide, we'll show the second way, but essentially it has to work for both sides, and then we can say, therefore, that the um, identity is true. So let's take a look. I'm going to start, and again, I'm this is what I'm proving. So I'm going to start by saying that X belongs to A intersect B. That's essentially the same as me saying, I'm sorry, that X belongs to the complement. That's kind of like our premise before. So I'm just making an assumption. And I'm making an assumption because I need to have some element that's here and I need to show if that element is in the complement of A intersect B, it's also in here. So instead of just talking about it in generalities, I'm talking about a specific element X is in that complement of the intersection. So now I'm going to say, well, if X does belong to the complement of A intersect B, then it doesn't belong to A intersect B. And that's just by definition of a complement. Remember, the complement means anything that's not in that set, or in this case, the complement of a complement back to the original intersection. So now I'm going to write it just a little bit differently. I'm going to say, X belongs to A and X belongs to B. And what would I be saying with that? X belongs to A and X belongs to B would be the definition of an intersection, but I'm saying that's not going to be true because I'm saying X does not belong to A intersect B. So again, that's just the definition of the intersection. because that's what an intersection tells us. And the not is used because of this. So these two things are related. Now I can say, because I've got that not on the outside, I can say not X belongs to A, so that means X does not belong to A, or, oops, I forgot my not, not X is an element of B one or the other. How do I know that? That's De Morgan's law for propositional logic. So it's not Morgan's law, De Morgan's law for this, it's for propositional logic that says, hey, you got a negation on the outside, you can distribute it essentially. And then I'm just going to rewrite that because we never write not X belongs to A. I'm just going to say X does not belong to A or X does not belong to B. And that's just the definition 
of a negation. So I'm getting closer. I've got x doesn't belong to A or x doesn't belong to B. And then I can say x belongs to not A or x belongs to not B, which is the definition of a complement. Because again, I'm saying x doesn't belong to A, therefore it must belong to not A. And then I can rewrite that, which is exactly what I wanted to do, is that x belongs to not A union not B, because union is the same as an or, and therefore this is the definition of a union. And so essentially I've proved the first side. I've proved that if x is in the complement of the intersection, then x is in the union of the complements. And now on my next slide, I have to do it in the opposite direction. So again, this time I'm looking here. I'm starting with the assumption that x does belong to the complement of A union the complement of B, and that's just by assumption. I'm going to assume that so that I can prove at the end that it belongs to the complement of the intersection. So a lot of these steps should look kind of the same but backwards from the last way that we did it. So I'm going to say x is an element of not A or x is an element of not B. Definition of a union. That is what a union says. It's in one or the other. Then I can say, if that is true, then x is an, not an element of A, or x is not an element of B. And that's the definition of a complement. Because if it is in the complement, it's not in the original set. Then I can say, not, and then I can say, x is an element of A, or not, x is an element of B. And that is the definition of negation. So I'm just writing this in a way that makes a little more sense using propositional logic. Then of course, I'm kind of going backwards here. I'm saying not x belongs to A and x belongs to B. So I've sort of pulled that negation out and of course this is De Morgan's law and it's for propositional logic so it's not the De Morgan that we just spoke of. And if I know that not x belongs to A and x belongs to B then I can say not x belongs to A intersect B, which is the definition of an intersection, which leads very well into, oops, that x belongs to not A intersect B. So if not x belongs to A intersect B, then X belongs to not A intersect B, which is the definition of a complement. And therefore, we can say that the complement of A intersect B is equal to not A union not B. And we can only do that because we've proved both directions, this one and this one. So we have just proved De Morgan's second law, and we used um, essentially the method that says if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A, then A is equal to B. Now we're going to do the exact same thing in just a little bit different method. So I'm saying A intersect B and the complement of that, and I'm going to write what that means using set builder notation, which is all of the X's such that X is 
not in A intersect B. And that's definition of a complement. Then I'm going to say that it's all of the X's such that not X belongs to A intersect B. And that's just the definition of this symbol that does not belong to. So if it does not belong to, then it does not belong to. So it's essentially just sort of moving that negative to the outside. Then I can say this is all of the X's such that, again, not X belongs to A and X belongs to B. So notice what I'm doing here is I just went from using this intersection symbol to now using this and symbol by the definition of an intersection. Then I can say the intersection of uh, AB or the complement of the intersection AB is all of the X's such that not X belongs to A or not X belongs to, whoops, X belongs to B. So that's De Morgan's law again for propositional logic. And again, that's just saying, hey, if you've got this negation on the outside, you can distribute it to the inside and change the symbol. So I'm changing it from an and to an or. And again, remember my goal is this is where I'm trying to get to. So I'm trying to get to not A union not B. And I'm getting really, really close. But now let's say all of the X's such that X does not belong to A. Oops. X does not belong to A. Or X does not belong to B. And again, that's the definition of this symbol again, kind of going in the other direction now. Therefore, I can say if that is true, then I'm dealing with all of the X's such that X does belong to not A or X does belong to not B. Yes, I don't need those parentheses. And again, that's the definition of a complement. And then I can say, well, that is all of the X's such that X belongs to not A union not B by the definition of a union. And therefore, I'm looking at A not A union not B. And then I'm done. So I have proven that it is true. So we have proved this twice now, but gosh, I feel like we should just prove it one more time just for fun. And this time we are going to use a membership table and a membership table is really just kind of like a truth table. So when I'm setting up my membership table, I'm still going to have my A column and my B column, and I'm going to still use true, 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 false, false, true, false, false to get started. And remember that this is what I'm trying to get to is I want those two to be columns. So for my first one, I need A intersect B and then the complement. So I'm going to do A intersect B as a column. And then I'm going to do the complement of A intersect B and then I also want not A, and I want not B, and then I want the union 
of not A, not B. And when it's all said and done, I want this column and this column to match up. So let's start plugging away and see what happens. So if I have A intersect B, this would be a one because remember that means it has to be in both A and B. This would be a zero and a zero and a zero. So the complement of that, of A intersect B, would be zero, one, one, one. So it's kind of like the negation, it's the opposite of it. Then I've got A is one, one, zero, zero. So I'm gonna go zero, zero, one, one for not A. For not B, 0, 1, 0, 1. And now I'm looking for the union of A, not A and not B, which means I just need to have a 1 in one of those two columns. So 0, 0, I don't have a 1 in one of the columns. On this one, however, I do. On this one, I do. And on this one, I do. And so now I've proved, which I think is the easiest way, proved using a membership table, which is essentially like a truth table. Before we moved on, I just wanted to give you um, an idea of one more uh, notation that you might see as you're working through your homework this week, and that is just the generalized union and intersection. And so here, and I think we've talked about it before, but I wasn't sure, so I wanted to put it in here. Remember that this would just be the union of several items, and this would mean from you know the index starting at one and going to n, of all of whatever A happens to be. And so here I would have A1, union A2, union blah, 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 all the way up to AN. Same thing in the intersection. I'm looking at the intersection of all index items from one to N. And so that would be the intersection or any items that all of these have in common, because again, we're looking at the intersection. So not really a new concept, it's just a different notation uh, where you're dealing with quite a few different um, sets that either you're taking the union of or the intersection of. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this video series helpful so far. Up next is functions.